What's going on, everybody? Doc, your average gamer guys, back yet again. Some more Last Day on Earth action and another installment in our Wasteland Survival Guide. So today we're going to be jumping into a topic that I feel like is one of the more important ones if you plan to play the game for the long term. Um, this isn't something that's going to immediately make you rich. It's not going to help you instantly get a whole lot of items or make a ton of progression, but over time is going to be very, very helpful in getting additional resources and utilizing things that may otherwise not be so useful to you anymore. And of course, you know, based on the title of this, that we're here to talk about the recycler. So we're going to jump in. We're going to spend some time talking about the recycler, generally how it works. I'm going to showcase a handful of things. Then I'm going to talk about a few items that I really think you should be stocking up on and saving for some longer term progress. Now, all of these things to be said, this is going to be different. What you use the recycler for is going to be different based on the level and the needs and what you are seeking to get progress in. There's a ton of things. There's a ton of long grinds here in Last Day on Earth. So I may suggest putting X item, such as batteries, for instance, into the recycler. And you may say, I don't really need those materials. It's more beneficial for me to use maybe used melee weapons or a different material or something that you have a little bit more access to for where you are in the game. So I'm going to try to talk about a handful of things kind of as you would progress i'm going to reference level because usually level for the most part corresponds with kind of where you are at in the game what you have access to what you have unlocked with some generalities of course and uh, and hopefully that can be somewhat of a helpful guide as you're looking at and continuing on in your last day on our journey of course i will not cover everything in this video so if there is anything that i do miss please feel free to drop down in the comments below again keep in mind that if there's a suggestion about what I put in here or what you should be putting in here, it's going to be very dependent on where you are in the game and what resources you need available to you. Or again, maybe what you're hunting or maybe what you're grinding for completion in to get that next step, right? So um, at some point, all of these things are useful, but they are useful in different stages of the game or again, for different crafts or different things that you're looking for. I'm also going to give a big shout out to the Last Day on Earth Wiki. If you just go and search Recycler, there is a very, actually very in-depth section on this. I've pulled a little bit of the content here from that, just to reference a few of the numbers and to talk about it. If you are interested, that has a full breakdown of everything that you can recycle, what it breaks down into, how the level up system for the Recycler works, and a few other really, really good bits of info so be sure to jump over there give that a look if you find this video helpful and you want to know a little bit more for anything that we did not cover let's get into it the first question i'm going to get asked for anybody that's playing free to play uh or otherwise does not uh, take a look at the shop is doc how do you have two recyclers well you can purchase the second one should you that's a question that you'll have to answer for yourself i would tell you that amongst the things where you could spend money Storages are obviously always very, very useful. That allows you to extend the storage in your base. If you can purchase any of those, you should consider that, I think, as one of the main purchases. A second recycler is probably up there, in my opinion. Probably ranks about number two behind any type of storage that you can pick up. And the reason I say that is because the ability to have two of these running consistently and the nice part about the recycler is that it runs and it does work while you're gone very much like your other workbenches um i personally would say it's worth it but it's only worth it if you play the game consistently enough where you can make use of that i would say early on don't bother with it one recycler on our free to play account has certainly done its fair share of work I will talk about this here in the future, but Recycler is also a great place if you have any of your daily ad skips to use those for some of your longer term recycling needs. That can help you turn through some items, free some space up in your base, but it's also just a good time sink um, and it's a good way to use that. Now you could use that skip for other things like energy and things that are more helpful, but if you don't have anything to use it for the day, you could consider some of the longer recycling times using that and i'll showcase that here in a second so should you buy another one that's really up to you 
but you do have the option it's in the shop for you and you can pick it up for whatever it is in your local currency i would tell you again it ranks probably number two for me uh in terms of things to uh to spend money on in the game for long-term success i would wait until you know that you really enjoy the grind of the game if you're just starting out and you're just looking for tips and tricks welcome again to the wasteland survival guide this should be a very helpful series for you but if you're earlier on in the game don't worry about it so much because you probably don't have a ton of stuff to throw in there. Later on, when you start stockpiling a whole bunch of resources, it's a great way uh, to have some extra capability and get a little bit of extra stuff done while you're not currently in the game and you're not actively playing. So that's pretty nice. Let's talk about the recycler and how it works here. It's relatively simple. As you would imagine, you can recycle items. We have a handful here we're going to talk about. But how this essentially works is that each item, not every item, each item has the ability to be broken down into one to up to four things. Now, not very many have four things. Mostly only weapons have four where you can pick up a weapon mod. In, on average, typically, you'll see either two items or three items uh, that can be produced from the item that you drop in there. And we'll showcase that here in just a second. Assigned to that, though, once we put an item in, you're going to see some percentages pop up here. And I want to talk about this because this part is probably one of the most important things to understand about weapons. I'm going to drop this M16 in. So you can see here grayed out. We've dropped this M16 in and we have percentages aligned here at the bottom for how much or what percentage we could see of these items that we'll get from this. Now weapons and armor are a little bit different because they have durability. So I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. Everything else, though, essentially, these percentages align to how likely you are to get that item from recycling it. As you can see here, 100% for springs, if this was a full durability weapon, which it is not, um, we would be guaranteed, essentially, to get a spring or multiple springs out of this as we recycled this weapon. 75% here for factory parts, carbon composite, as you can see. And then it goes down into a blueprint for M16s. Again, one of the very, very few things that you'll see with four items is going to be your weapons. Now, these percentages, they are different based on your level of your recycler specific to that item. So we're going to showcase here, and we have ours pretty well leveled up, but not all the way maxed. We have still some work to do. But essentially, you can get to level 50 with each of these. Currently, we have others sitting at 20. We have melee weapons at 37. And then clothes, mechanics, electronics, and firearms for us are all maxed. How does that system work? Well, as you recycle items and as you finish recycling the items, you essentially consider it getting like experience points. You essentially get experience points towards leveling up that specific category for the item that you break down. When you recycle enough of those items, you'll gain a level. You do that 50 times or 49 times and you get it to max. And then at that point, you have the max durability chance or max capability chance rather of uh, getting items. Now, as you level up each of those respective um, kind of subsets or types of items, you're going to see the percentages that we showed you increase. Now, there is a system for how this works. Jump over to the last day on Earth um, wiki if you want to take a little bit more of a deep dive. Just understand that as you break down more and more of the item and as you level that up, these percentages will grow and grow and grow pretty much up until pretty close to what you see here. Now, I'm going to reference the chart here just a little bit to showcase. Most of it, starting at level one, you're going to see your first item be about 80%, second item about 50%, and then like 10% for the final two. You can see here at max level, you essentially bring this one up to 100. You get about an extra 25% here for the second item, and extra about 9 or 10% for these. So this is important for the four outputs that you have. But again, as you level those up, you're going to see those percentages increase. Now this may look a little bit different based on some different things. Right. So each of the categories is going to have some different percentages that you see here. So now we're doing a melee weapon, which we have at level 37. We are at 99 percent here. This just has two outputs, but then 31 percent for the secondary output. And you're going to see this shift kind of as we go. We have clothes here maxed up 99 percent, 72 percent and then 5 percent for the top end material, which is uh, these lead plates, which is 
these are really good by the way to break down so these things are going to shift as you can see just understand that as you level up your recycler as you break more things down as you get more use out of this you're going to see better percentages and essentially you're going to see better returns as you get that now it's not to say that through recycling this, you will only get one of these. That's not how this works. You can see this. You can see multiple of these items. Typically, if you see the lower percentages, you're probably only going to see one. But anything in the 100% to the 75%, you can see multiple as you break down this item. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is items that you can put in stacks because you can put stacked items in here. You can essentially keep this rolling. Every item has a different breakdown timer. So you see 20 minutes here for these cell phones, 21 minutes here for these cameras, wires we could throw in at seven minutes. Typically your melee weapons are gonna be relatively low because they're single stack items. Same thing with your armors. I actually have a boost to the time because of my VIP zone. So these times may be a little bit different. That's one of the boosts is workstation buff. But typically seven to 10 minutes for these single stack items. And then again, some of the other things, some of the topper, upper end materials, such as like engine parts here, or for instance, these fragments of titanium armor, you're seeing 40 minutes, 42 minutes. Typically weapons take about 40 minutes or without the boost, generally close to an hour to get that knocked out. So every item is a little bit different. Every category is a little bit different, but you can see multiple and putting a stack of items in is especially effective to allowing this to run again while you're taking a break or while you have a pause, or maybe you're running to a location and you're gonna spend some time grinding there. Having this running in the background is really, really fantastic for you to pick up some items. Now it's important to note, as you go through and as you throw in a stack of items, very much like the stacks that you have in your inventory, the recycler works the same. So if we were to break down this 20 stack of cell phones here, we could get to the point where we don't break all 20 down, probably typically break maybe about 15 or down, but we could see a stack of 20 plastic. What that's going to do is actually stop the recycler from working. Anytime you get a full stack in any of the three or four slots here for any of the weapons or items that you break down, the recycler will stop until you basically clear the ability for the outputs to continue. In my opinion, that's actually pretty nice. That allows you to maximize the recycler items that you get. However, it can be a little frustrating if you forget to maybe pull those items out or reset or do whatever the case. You can essentially lose a little bit of time if you think about it that way. It's not the biggest deal, but it is important to note that if you are constantly recycling the same thing and you get a full stack here, it will pause the recycler. I will tell you fragments of titanium armor, one of my favorite things to break down because you can get titanium, which is pretty cool. You can also get aluminum bars, which are certainly helpful. A lot of times though, I will break only about five of these down before I see a full stack of wires. So um, it's good. It means that we soak up a bunch of time. At the same time, I can't churn through all of this in one sitting. I have to go and kind of tend, if you will, to this recycler here. So keep that in mind. Couple of really helpful tips for you. But again, what should you be doing? You should be essentially looking to break down things that are going to help you at first with materials that you need. Now on a later end, you should be working to try to max these categories. I will tell you that I'm pretty constantly throwing in melee weapons. I'm trying to do a bunch of the other items, uh, although I usually kind of forget about those from time to time because getting these categories maximized gives you the best total chance at outputs for that item once you get it to that max level. So you should be trying to do that. I will tell you the most important three, in my opinion, is probably actually electronics first, then probably mechanics, and then firearms. Electronics is gonna be, as you would imagine, any of your electronics, your mobile phones, your cameras, even wires, USB drives, flashlights, certain other things will fall into that, like car batteries and a handful of other. There's some really, really good things. The outputs from these are fantastic and gonna be some of the most useful stuff that you will need a large, large volume of, in addition to some pretty rare materials. You'll see with cameras, you can get lenses, you can get copper from a lot of these. So it's very, very good. Uh, electronics is probably up there at number one for what I would try to max out first.
The second one is actually going to be mechanics. And this is going to essentially be any of your mechanical type things. So for instance, that's interesting that these are other. I wouldn't have expected that. Mechanics here, they just recently added gas cylinders to this. This is going to be any of your um, mechanical parts. Let's say you have maxed your chopper, for instance, and you're a little bit later into the progression. You've used up all of your chopper forks and all of that different stuff to max your chopper. You can throw these in and utilize your mechanic skill to essentially get some really good materials out of these as well. Now they're all a little bit different chopper forks. Well, chopper forks and gas tanks are the same, but you can see again, gas cylinders. If you have those, if you finish your ATV, for instance, you can be pulling some steel from these. So it can be very helpful. I think mechanics is one of those. You will use this at some point because some of the items become totally obsolete once you have completed or made those vehicles. Again, for instance, the best example I can give is your chopper forks, your tanks, uh, your chopper wheels. There's really not a whole lot to do with them besides break them down once you've maxed your chopper and obviously once you've built your chopper to be able to do that. So um, that's how I'd rank that. And then firearms, I think, are exceptionally important, although I don't I do not strongly recommend breaking down full durability firearms until you have a very large stockpile. It can be very tempting to try to grab blueprints from them. However, the return rate, even when you have it maxed, is only 19%, which means that's less than one out of five, and this still is that good. I can tell you with Dragonovs, I broke down like a lot of them and only saw, I think out of 10, I think I only saw one blueprint. I got unlucky there probably because that missed the, the percentages, but keep in mind that it's per item that you're dropping in there. These can be great, exceptionally great for things like springs and factory parts. On occasion, you will see some carbon composite. I'm telling you though, I would not prioritize doing that. What instead you should be doing to help to level this up is taking low level durability weapons like this that don't have a ton of life left. You can throw them in here. Typically from this, I would see maybe a spring or two on occasion, I'll get really lucky and see a factory part if it's closer to about like 30% durability or slightly above, but that's about it. The nice part though, is you're still gonna end up getting good experience and leveling firearms up. And then much later on in your journey, when you do have a large stockpile of weapons, can you be throwing this stuff in, grabbing some blueprints or some of these other materials? So again, this is all gonna be based on where you are at in the game what you have, what you have access to, what's important to you to grind. I would tell you though, a great way, especially for firearms to get it leveled up, start with low durability weapons that don't have a ton of use, keep them one shot or two shot or a couple of shot, bring them back to your base, level up your firearm skill. And then in the future, you'll be happy to be able to drop these in, potentially grab some of those additional resources. So that is generally with many tips thrown in, how the recycler works. You're essentially taking items that you don't have a use for anymore, and you're breaking them down. Now, some items are very much dedicated to being recycled. A lot of your electronics items, like your cameras, your broken cell phones, things that we have pictured here are going to be designed to do just that. USB drives is a great example of that. You use a few of these for very, very few things like Bunker Bravo, I think has you drop a couple in. But overall, a lot of these types of items are designed for you to break down. So you can bring them here, you can break them down, you can try to get these upper tier materials, you can get some of these more basic materials that are helpful in your progression for some of the other upgrades or things that you're going to do. So it's good to collect those, it's good to hang on to it. There is a handful of things, and Forlorn Fair showcased one of them that we had recently, which is the junk repository that is designed to hang on to items that you're going to break down. So there is a need for this. There is definitely a kind of system built around the recycler and having it and having items in the game to be able to do that. So do kind of keep that in mind as you're working the levels up and you're getting some things. I wanna now jump into what should you be breaking down or what are some good items to consider breaking down? Like I said, this is gonna be very dependent on where you're at in the game, what progress you have done, what things, again, you're trying to go after and you're trying to complete. 
Me personally, I hang on to the following things. And I have this container here outside of the junk repository. I have this container here, this rack designed to set up to do this. I typically will keep lower level armor, usually SWAT armor and above, although hazmat suits I have found to be very ineffective. You get these from Port Lab specifically. You can also grab them from the T-Hub. You can grab this set of armor from uh, the port, the, uh, the sunken treasure box as well. I don't typically use these for anything because the armor on them isn't very good. And you don't really need hazmat protection for a lot of things. You could argue for Bunker Bravo, but you should really only be clearing that probably when the event is going on. So I like to break these down because of the materials that they have. But armor, that's how I'm going to do that. If you're earlier on, even just really broken pieces of armor can help you to level up. You may get a little bit of cloth or some fabric back. It's probably not going to be game changing, but it can help you to level up that piece of this and then when you get to things like hazmat suits and pieces of armor you can pull some of the better end materials out of them so that is really nice i do obviously also hang on to uh, essentially all of our chopper items our chopper is maxed we have no need to drop these anywhere so these are great to break down for some metals fragments of titanium armor which is a later end material that you will find. Uh, you can do this after you hit the port. There's a couple of other crates and some other ways for you to pick this up. This is really, really good to break down. This is probably one of the best materials in my opinion, although it is a very heavy time sink. And uh, titanium is a great material with not a lot of use at the moment. Hopefully we'll see that here at a near change with some of the roadmap updates and things that are coming, but we'll go from there. And then again, I do keep a lot of low durability weapons. Now, I hang on to low durability weapons to also use them in the repair bench, which is a VIP exclusive, but is coming to a game hopefully, and well, it's not hopefully, it's coming to a game near you with a soon to be update here. So if you're watching this much later on, hopefully that is in the game at this point. But I do hang on to these because they can be really good to be able to break down and to grab, again, some springs, some factory parts from uh, as well. So that's what I typically hang on to. And then again, anything that I can throw into this junk repository if you have access to it. And it includes things like expensive watches. You see here, we got a whole bunch of USB drives. I think cameras are fantastic. Anytime you see this stuff in the wild, it may not feel like it's very good. It may not feel like it has a ton of use, but I will tell you this section of items with one piece that I'm missing, which is some batteries, are probably the top tier of items that I break down with the highest level of consistency. The reason for that, again, is the items that they give. Now, do I need a ton of plastic? No, but high-tech components is very valuable, especially as you're going to go and complete things like Bunker Bravo and the terminals. A lot of weapons and upper tier weapon mods require high tech components. It's always good to have electronic circuits. You need a handful through your progression, but these are great for raiders. They're also great if you'd go and do Blackport PD. So it's nice to have a good stockpile of those. So phones are exceptionally helpful. I personally really like expensive watches. These can be used with the trader. So it's good to hang on to these from time to time. You're also getting some scrap metal, which is great to break down into iron. You need a billion iron in this game. So that's helpful. Bolts you can use for a lot of things and are great for upgrading and uh, putting some different things together. And then on the top end of this, the fact that you can get copper out of expensive watches is super good. Copper is probably one of the harder metal materials to get. You have to go to the Northern Zone, which again in the future is going to change. So keep all of this with a grain of salt because we just got that info. However, copper is a really tough material to get. It's also very hard to smelt. It takes a lot of time. So being able to get copper bars out of just being able to break something down like an expensive watch is really fantastic. And out of a stack of 20, will you see a whole lot of these? No, but even if you grab one or two copper bars, it's really worth it because again, you're not really using the expensive watches for anything else but your recycler. So very, very good. I personally also really like cameras, mostly because you have a higher chance of getting copper bars. You can also get lenses. Lenses are a fantastic weapon modification item that you need. Basically all of the scopes that you're gonna put together in the game for weapon modifications require some lenses. And these can be also a very, very difficult item to find. So having an opportunity to get these 
from just breaking something down is really, really fantastic. So that's typically what I'm focused on. Again, you can throw flashlights in that mix as well. Um, I don't, let me see if I have any batteries actually in here because I wanted to showcase these, but I break them down. That's my, <laughs> that's my problem. I break them down. So I never have any. Uh, let's just see, are they in the other category here? I do, batteries. Okay, let me showcase these. I think actually batteries are probably the best, mostly because at the max level of electronics, you can see you have almost a 30% chance of grabbing copper. These are fantastic. You do need a handful of these, again, for some different for some different items to put together. You can use these to actually power up a few uh, different items in your base as well. I don't personally find that useful. I find it useful to break these down and to get the copper out of them. And again, the uh, the scrap metal is nothing to be upset about. You can use this, you can smelt this down into iron, which is also a extremely valuable resource. So those are some of the biggest ones. I would tell you if you're early on in your journey, be hanging on to those and just be focused on the electronics component piece. As you get farther in and get leveled up and you make some progression, like I said, weapons become really, really important. I typically do also throw in a bunch of melee weapons here, although I will typically keep these low durability. For me, that's mostly just to try to get this leveled up. I'm trying to get this to the point where I am at level 50. You can see this little green bar right here. I should have covered this earlier. That is the experience that you're gonna get from this weapon breaking down. The tough part is, with stacked items, you can see a lot of progression very quickly. Um, and the amount of experience you need as you level up obviously increases, so keep that in mind. With stacked items, you can see a lot because you can be churning through 10, 15, 20 of these in one sitting as the recycler works through that. With non-stacked items, you have to be a little bit more deliberate. That's why leveling these up, like melee weapons and guns, for instance, is a little bit harder to do because you have to Watch your recycler a little bit more carefully. Um, so these aren't bad. You're gonna get some materials out of this. It's usually nothing to shake a stick at. Um, like I said, I do like the hazmat suits. Some pieces of armor can give you steel back. So that could be very, very helpful. I personally like hazmat suit for the ability to get lead plates. Lead plates are very, very difficult to find. Rubber is also a really, really good material for your ATV as well as your weapon modifications. So you need a ton of this. Plastic again. Feels like it will be scarce at the beginning, but then you'll realize it's not scarce once you break a lot of stuff down because you can get plastic out of most things. Some other things that you might not be aware of when it comes to using the recycler that can give you some items. If you are at a point where you don't need engine parts anymore, which you will get there at some point, you can grab some steel from these. So that's great. You can also grab some aluminum bar. This works off of your mechanics skill, as you can see. So those aren't bad. Interestingly enough, air filters, again, probably feel relatively scarce. As you progress, you will have a ton of these. You can break these down. I don't necessarily recommend that, but you can. I don't think these materials are worth it, but it is one of the other category items. So do keep that in mind. You can actually break food down. <laughs> not all foods, not every item can be recycled. Some things can't. If you can't drag it into the recycler, it won't work. Uh, but surprisingly, some items can. Food you can, you can actually get aluminum from this. So that is pretty interesting. One thing that doesn't have a ton of use, but is probably really good to recycle is beer. And this is actually one thing I'm gonna be recycling a lot here in the near future to get our other category leveled up. You can see that green bar for the experience we're gonna get from just one of these, by the way. I should mention that. As you, as you drop these in here, this experience bar is for one of these stack of 10, not all 10. So I'm gonna hit this experience. When this one is done, I'll get another chunk of experience and it'll showcase to you that uh, that works out pretty nicely. So this is an interesting one because you can get at a very, very low percentage rate, at least at level 20, we're at 7% to grab some aluminum. So do consider it. you might have some stacks of beer that you can throw in here. Some other upper tier materials. I was actually very surprised as I was doing a little bit of research for this video. I don't think I've ever broken wrenches down. They have a lot of uses. They're great for a lot of things. You need quite a few of them for, for leveling up, settlement, your main base, putting some things together. Um, so I would not recommend wrenches to do this until you're much later into the game and the progression cycle like you have all of your terminals built and all that stuff however the fact that you can get some steel from this and it, it sits in the other category is very very interesting um again anytime you can break a material down and get a higher end um metal like copper 
like steel, you should consider it and wrenches can actually be one of those components. So if you have a good stockpile and you're looking for some steel, consider some wrenches to drop in here. Now, wrenches have separate uses as well. They can and use be, uh, be used for some of the boxes at the port for the delivery terminal. So you really wanna kind of balance those things. I wouldn't throw these in here right away. But if uh, you're at that point and you have a big stockpile like I do, you could consider throwing some wrenches in here and they stack to 20, which is always really nice. A couple of other things that you can, I don't know why you'd ever want to do this, but you can break down your med kits <laughs> for whatever reason. I have no idea why you'd want to do this, but a lot of materials in the game can be broken down. Again, not every single one of them. So I just want to showcase that one as kind of a funny concept here for you. You can, again, do car batteries. You choose. You choose. I don't think so at the moment. I would actually personally hang on to these. I don't break these down. I think there's going to be other future uses for these that become really, really important. That's my guess. Um, you need a ton of these, obviously, for ATV, for your uh, the boat, and a few other things. So I, my recommendation would be hang on to it. You're going to find enough acid and enough plastic in the future that's not bad. But the fact that you can get 40% here on lead plates is pretty cool. And these break down super fast. I'm very surprised to see that. Only a seven minute or probably a 10 minute timer if you don't have a boost. And then they just recently again added gas cylinders as a recyclable, com recyclable component. One of the few things you can actually get full steel plates from. Some of the armors you can get steel plates from. Uh, there's probably a handful of other items that I'm not thinking of. But one of the few that you can actually get steel plates instead of steel bars. Not that that matters huge difference but it does probably save you some time if you do need the steel plates for instance your atv or other things if you have spare ones of these do consider it the reason i would say not to do gas cylinders is that they are used as a fuel for it's not hydroponics it's one of the other benches i'll show you here at the end so do consider that i don't even have a big stockpile of these personally because i use them to fuel that other bench so you might want to hang on to these um and if your spare boat parts, like your propellers, are good options, actually, you don't need a ton of these. Uh, once you get your boat done and make your engines, you really don't need any of these that I'm aware of. So you can grab some steel plates here. You could also grab some titanium. So that is pretty cool. It looks like we are dying. Hold on. Quick paw. <laughs> Quick food break. Sorry about that. We were chatting for so long. We got that done. Let's just go and showcase here because I don't want to mislead anyone. Let's go and showcase here. It is the chemistry station. Chemistry station requires this as fuel. So keep that in mind. It's kind of an important one. Are you going to make a ton of stuff out of this? Maybe. You're probably not making acid. You might make gunpowder. What I use this for right now, very late game, specific to the drone, is iodine. Iodine, very rare material, but you can turn seaweed and your alcohol into iodine. And you need these gas cylinders to be able to fuel this. So should keep that in consideration. That's a lot of info. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, what you need here and what is what you're going to throw in here is really going to determine and depend on where you are at in the game. If I'm starting out early and I get my first recycler, by the way, which you can get your first recycler, I believe it's at level 32. Level 32, you can build your first recycler. It's not a very difficult workbench to build. You should prioritize building it almost as soon as you can. The sooner you can build it, the more things you can drop into it. The more time you give it, the better off you will be in the long run. If it's me, I'm dropping in a lot of these items, these electronic items that you don't really have a use for. I would really consider cameras, probably cameras and batteries being the top two, but cell phones and these USB drives are great. You can also drop in bolts if you like really are starving for scrap metal. Some of this stuff will break down bolts. You can see wires you can get some scrap metal from uh, if you have a big stockpile of that stuff. But I would focus on the electronics, like I said, from that point, then I would be utilizing almost broken melee weapons and almost broken um, guns. I'd be dropping those into the recycler as you have opportunity to do that. Don't let it overwhelm the storages at your base. It's very easy to do that. So make sure that you're constantly doing this. You should have a routine and a habit every time you go to your base. For instance, you should be checking your 
different workbenches. Recyclers should be in that, um, you know, that routine, that habit. You should always have something in this, in my opinion. You should always be breaking things down. You should always have stuff working towards it. Um, because again, you just need time. You need lots of time for this to be very effective for you. And again, as you give it more time, as you level these different categories up, you're gonna see better outputs from those. You're gonna see more outputs from those. And uh, it's gonna be really, really helpful. I didn't touch on this, but I need to talk about durability as it relates to weapons and armor. So essentially the reason, and I talked about this a little bit, but I didn't fully explain it, so I apologize. The reason that I can tell you from a durability weapon like this, you can see it has, you know, less than a quarter of its durability left. I can positively tell you I am not going to get a blueprint or a carbon composite, and I'm very likely not going to get a factory part out of this. Every once in a while, that may not be true. The way that this works is this percentage is this percentage down here for each of these categories multiplies off of the durability of the weapon. And this is effective for weapons, armors, and so all weapons, melees and guns and your armors, all right? So if you drop in a low durability weapon and it multiplies off this 19%, essentially is saying you're essentially guaranteeing that you're not going to be able to get these. Now, even with a full durability weapon, you still only have a 20% chance to get this, but your multiplication is going to be much, much better. The wiki does probably a little bit better of a job describing this, but I wanted to showcase that. I wanted to talk about it because I don't want you to waste time dropping weapons in here that are low durability thinking you're gonna get the top end materials. You are not. It's not going to happen. If you get really lucky for whatever reason, that could happen, but that's how it works. So again, I'm gonna read straight from the wiki. Items with durability such as melee weapons, firearms, and clothes affect its output percentages. The durability in percent is multiplied against the percent value displayed in the recycler. For example, a 50% durability AK will only have a 5% chance for a blueprint, even though the recycler says it has a 10% chance. I'm just gonna tell you in my anecdotal experience from doing just a bajillion weapons, <laughs> very, very low possibility you're gonna see either of these with really low durability. And if we had to put a percentage on this, I would say it's less than 20%. So, so 20% multiplied by 19% is a very, very low. If you want these upper tier materials, you're gonna have to put in almost full durability weapons to be able to realize that. So do keep that in mind. Again, you will see some springs potentially. There is a world in which with low durability weapons, you will see nothing. You will see absolutely nothing. Um, you will finish the recycler and there will be nothing here in any of these slots. The same is true though, for any of these items such as Let's take this propeller, for instance, anything with a low durability or low percent chance, we could get through recycling this and only see scrap metal. That's very, that's very likely that can happen. 15% here, 5% here. So do keep that in mind. Again, stacked items, that's where these come into play a little bit better because you're going to probably over time, let's say you go to bed for the night and you have this stack in here, you will likely return and have probably full on wires, you'll have some aluminum bars, and then you may, may have a titanium bar in here. Rinse, repeat that over the course of this full stack, you'll probably see all of these at some different proportions. You're gonna see a ton of wires, less aluminum bars, and then certainly less titanium bars. But out of 20, I'd probably plan to see maybe one or two titanium bars out of this full stack of 20, just with my experience. So do keep that in mind, very, very helpful, great time sink, and essentially great to just throw something in here, leave it, forget it. Come back to the base, grab your materials out of it, throw something else back in. I typically, if I'm going to run a system like this, if I wanna get down through a bunch of clothes and melee weapons, what I will actually do is if I'm running around the base, let's say I'm gonna go maybe do some settlement, that's when I'll drop in either weapon, either melee weapons or armors, which again, typically take around 10 minutes drop these in that way you can be popping in popping out doing the different stuff around your base say maybe you're going to go and upgrade some stuff or you're going to be you know refilling all of the rest of your you know different workbenches and doing some base maintenance then you can go and do that maybe you're going to go do a raid that doesn't take very long or a quick run to like one of the wood zones or stone zones then you can throw these in here also very passively what i have done 
while uh, you know I'm just maybe waiting for something or flipping between different games is just sit at the base and just constantly be throwing these in here. Come back in 10 minutes, throw a new one in, come back in 10 minutes, throw a new one in. Very passive way to do that, grab some materials uh, without really using anything, without using any energy, without really uh, using any supplies, burning much of anything. You just run into the base, throw something in here, run out, wait the time frame, come back to the game, rinse and repeat to be able to do that. It's a good way to get through a big stockpile if you have a lot of like melee weapons and armors that you want to break down and uh, and can be really effective to grab some good materials. So, so I hope this was really helpful for you. I wanted to dive in, do a pretty deep dive here on the recycler and how effective and uh, beneficial it can be. Again, it's great. It's great for some upper tier materials as you level your recyclers up. Consider if you would like to grab a second one, that's up to you. I, again, if it's me, personally, I would wait, get to the upper levels, get to the point where you're raiding because you're going to see a lot of batteries. You're going to see a lot of cell phones. You're going to see a lot of cameras come through. That's when it can be really, really effective. Plus at that point, you'll be level 50, 150 or above and uh, you'll probably have invested enough time that you'll want to continue it. I do think it's a worthwhile purchase in the long run if you're going to play the game for a while. If you're starting out, don't do it, in my opinion. If you're starting out, make sure you enjoy the loop of the game and the progression that you need to get. It's very grindy. You need to play the game for a long time to get some really good, you know, progress into a lot of the things. But once you get to that, it can be very rewarding. Recycler can be a great way to help you get there with just some good materials. And it's a really, really good use of time. Make sure, again, you have a good habit for always having something dropped into your recycler and that it's going. And uh, I think you will see long-term benefits for it. Again, I'm just going to note, if you have any additional questions, please, you can feel free to drop those down below. I would really, really recommend that you take a look at the wiki. I will link it in the uh, description below. I'm going to flash some socials help us out here continue to help grow the channel we really appreciate that trying to get to 10k subscribers by the end of the year if you're watching this in the future it should still be a very helpful technique and tool for you and video unless the recycler changes which i don't anticipate that it's going to if it does we'll do an updated video in the future we have some fun roadmap stuff coming up and fall and some different changes coming to the game so i'm really excited to cover that when that stuff drops, I think it's going to be a great end of the year for Last Day on Earth. I'm very excited for what we're going to see with a whole bunch of new content. So if you're interested, we're going to continue on with our Wasteland Survival Guide series here. Deep dives, we have a playlist if you want to go check that out. Um, we're, again, we deep dive into a lot of the mechanics of the game and some different locations. Really put a lot of effort into these videos and research to make sure we're getting the facts right. So I hope it's been beneficial and helpful for you. Again, if you have anything that we missed down in the comments below, be sure to share it, but I hope this was helpful. And thank you again for being here. Likes and comments are great. Again, check the links in the description. Come check out our other channels. Come join our Discord. We have our Last Day on Earth channel, which also posts all of the official Last Day on Earth Discord updates. So if you want to stay up to date with the game, our Discord is a great way to do that. And uh, we just appreciate all the support. Thanks again, as always, for watching and checking this one out. Like I said, go check out some of our other plays. We've got a free-to-play series, I mentioned that. And uh, we do a whole bunch of Last Day on Earth content. So. Stay tuned for us, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.